Good evening, thank you for joining us and welcome back to DXB Today. Tonight we are talking marine life and all of the ecosystems around our seas in the UAE. And that brings us to our next guest, who is the founder of the first ever locally grown edible oyster farm in the UAE, fostering sustainability through practices and guaranteeing eco-friendly seafood production. Please welcome to the DXB Today sofa, Rami Murray. Rami, so good to see you. Pleasure. It's an honor. Again. Yeah, yeah, again, again. Yeah, yeah. This is it. I remember a couple of years ago, um, I had the, the lucky experience of visiting the farm yeah. and it was my birthday. One of the best I've ever had. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that was such a great experience. Yeah. But I remember being there and you were starting with the, uh, the coral, the coral reef, the new... Uh, yeah, we were doing a, an experiment. We were putting a, a bed of oyster shells um, to see how coral would grow. Um, and uh, yeah, I forgot you were there actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah and how's that coming uh, yeah. along then? It went really well. Yeah. yeah. We, um, it was a roaring success um, because um, ASRAC had been putting uh, coral tables. Yeah. Um, and then so we thought by adding oyster shells, we wanted to see if there would be any, any impact. Um, and we found that the coral grew 30% faster with the shells in the vicinity because apparently they were leaching the, the minerals or, or something and it, it, it worked really well. Fantastic. Which it was actually the, the seed that our main project grew out of because we now have the Dibba Bay Oyster Reef Creation Project uh, where we're building a massive oyster reef along the Fajera coast. But it all started there. I forgot you were there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was there at the yeah, very beginning and it, yeah. was, it was so fascinating. And that was yeah. one of the, the best things, obviously, one of the, the main best things as well was eating so many fantastic oysters. Uh, yeah. That was great. We had a good because, feed. Yeah, yeah. But, but that was uh, that was something I was fascinated in. And uh, yeah, it's good to know that it's all going uh, strides yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I don't know how you guys like to take your oyster, but I absolutely love oysters. I mean, for me, all you need is a twist of lemon, a dash of hot sauce, and you slide that baby down and it is heaven. My daughter <laughs> thinks it's very cruel, but she's six years old. She doesn't know any better. <laughs> Which brings brings me to my next question, Rami. So you recently launched the Dibba Bay Oyster Reef Creation Project, which involves collecting back some of these oyster shells from restaurants and hotels. I didn't yes. realize that was something you could do. Tell us more about that, please. Yeah, um, so once you've, once you've eaten the oyster, traditionally the shells would just, would just be discarded, which, which isn't a, a terrible thing. Uh, they're not gonna cause any problem. Uh, when the oysters have been growing, they've actually been sequestering carbon in their shell. So they've already done a lot of good for the environment, uh, but they can do a lot more good. So what we were doing was we would collect the shells back from our partner restaurants, and they're actually a perfect medium to, for other marine life to grow on. And they also, when you put a pile of shells on the, on the seabed, they create lots of little nooks and crannies, which is perfect for juvenile post-larvae fish. So you can create this wonderful sort of nursery environment for, for baby fish, and also surface area that is wonderful, as we found with the, the, that experiment we did, that coral loves to grow on as well. This is so exciting and just amazing. I'm loving this. And it really sort of is a nice segue to my question for you in terms of waste accumulation. Obviously a big concern when it comes to oyster farming. Can you let us know how, what you're doing in terms of... Well, with, re well with regards to waste accumulation, um, it's actually not a problem at all with oyster farming. I think, I think you may be referring to aquaculture in, in, in general. Um, because you can have quite intensive aquaculture, but, but shellfish farming is actually very low intensity. And we're not feeding them or using any artificial uh, chemicals or, or, or anything. Like, and so they feed naturally on the phytoplankton in, in the ocean and we use very low densities. So they actually have a net positive <coughs> impact on their surrounding area. They're filtering the water, they're conditioning the water. The nets that we're holding them in are like a temporary hanging reef. So you've got seaweed growing on the outsides that the fish can feed on. So it's actually net positive and something we're really proud of. Yeah, let's talk a little bit, Rami, about this net positivity because it seems yeah. like there doesn't even seem to be a downside because yeah. I've heard from certain vegans as well that yeah. considering oysters don't have a central nervous system, mm -hmm. don't have a functioning brain, that it's considered ethical to eat them as well. I mean, it's a hot topic. It's up for debate. <laughs> <laughs> But can it's you shed so any light on it? Uh, uh, no, no, exactly, as, exactly as you say. Um, it's a gray, it's a gray area of veganism, um, and so if you're an, as a vegan, if you're not, I'm talking as if I know all what I'm talking <laughs> about. But as far as I understand, um, 
it, with veganism, there's, there's two schools of thought. It's about, are you causing any pain? So if there is a no, no central nervous system, then it's okay. Or it's just, I don't want to eat a live animal. And they so. don't feel any pain at all? No, 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 okay. they don't have a It doesn't seem to be a downside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how many shells do you uh, get back from all of the restaurants and all of the different places that you supply? Now, because there are so many, you supply so much. Yeah. And, and a lot of, you've, you've got people, you either love them or you hate them, but yeah. most people in the UAE love them. Yeah, um, that's a great question because obviously we just launched this project quite recently. And so we're partnering with different restaurants, different hotels, um, and we're always looking for other, other partners to come on board. Uh, we're also raising sponsorship as well to help for collecting the shells and then monitoring, monitoring the reef because it's, it's so important to actually record what you're, what you're achieving. Uh, so yeah, great sponsorship opportunities if anyone <laughs> wants to help. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, look, I went to an event the other day mm -hmm. and um, it was loads of different food stations and mm -hmm. it was really nice and glamorous. Mm -hmm. And there was an oyster station mm -hmm. and they were empty. Yeah. They were completely empty. Dibble Bay, everyone loves them, man. Yeah. It's just going from strength to strength, right? Yeah, we're, we're really proud because before we started, as you mentioned earlier, we're the only farm here. Before we started, 100% of the oysters consumed here were imported mm -hmm. and they were flown in on air freight. And so huge carbon impact there. Um, and so by growing them locally, we're not only sequesting carbon in the shell as we grow them, we're also canceling out all those imports. And so there's huge carbon savings there. And we've actually, we started in 2016. Um, and then this year, we've now got about a 40% market share. So we're, we've displaced all those imports. So. That's incredible. And Rami, yeah. I see here that you're already in 150 restaurants. Yeah. If more people want to partner up with you, where can they find you? Do you have any physical locations? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've got a couple of our own restaurants. Um, but if you want to get in touch, of, of course, social media, <coughs> Dibba Bay. Uh, you can info at dibbabay.com or check out the website, Instagram. Amazing. Well, thank you yeah. so much for the work you're doing and for coming on to DXB today. Thank you very much. All right, coming up, we are moving on to our spotlight. Today's spotlight is on a company offering tailored training and certification for lifeguards, businesses and residents in the region in water safety and first aid as well. This is Luke Cunningham from BlueGuard. I'm Luke Cunningham, co-founder and managing director of BlueGuard. And our company trains and licenses lifeguards and it equips people with the skills needed for emergency response. The first zero to four minutes of an incident, be it a drowning or a cardiac arrest, are the most crucial and critical. Um, the decisions we make during this time can actually be the difference between life and death. So we empower people with the, the knowledge and the skills to make the right decisions before an ambulance arrives. We've achieved some pretty incredible things over the years. Um, one of the standouts for me is when we trained all of the staff for the UE Pavilion for the Expo in emergency first aid, and most recently the launch of our new business called Deep Blue Technologies, which specializes in AI solutions for drowning prevention and to support lifeguards. The long-term goal for BlueGuard is to create the BlueGuard Foundation, which is going to be dedicated to providing water safety training in parts of the world where they really need it the most. The best way people can get involved is by signing up and doing a first aid course. Not only for yourself, but it empowers you to make the right decisions when it matters for your family and friends that are around you. Time for a quick break. Coming up, we are raising awareness on marine conservation through photography with the founder of scubapeople.com. Plus, we've got great music on set, so stay with us.